We define probability, probability, and we defined it with a fraction. Do you remember what the fraction was? It was like a big long one with words on the top and the bottom. Does so anyone remember what the numerator and denominator of this fraction up is? R is. Anyone? Can you take this? If you want to work out the probability of flipping a head when you're flipping coins, right? Or rolling a six. How do you do it? What do you put on the top of the bottom? Rinesh? The sample space. Okay, so sample space. Something to do with sample space is really important to me. Does it go on the top or the bottom? Let's answer that question first. Someone else to help out Rinesh, because Rinesh has started us off, which is really great. So no, it's Kimmy. Um, so what goes on the top is the number of favorable favorable outcomes. Okay, number of favorable outcomes. Let's pause on that, Kimmy. Let's see if someone else can help you out. Number of favorable outcomes, that's the ones you're interested in. That's like the six or the head, right? But Rinesh mentioned something about sample space, which is very helpful. It's not sample space though. Down the bottom here, it's something a little slightly different to that. Yeah, number Jared. Okay, number of total, total possible outcomes. And that's what the sample space is, right? So you can say number of possible outcomes, or you might recall that another way, another phrase for describing this denominator, which is, I'm going to pull on Rinesh's language here, is the size of the sample space. That's the same idea, right? On a dime. What is the sample space on a dime? One, two, six. on a die. Oh, One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? That's the sample space. So the size of the sample space is how many things are there? It's six. Right? So that's why, as um, as we had pointed out before, the probability of a six rolling a six on a die is one out of six, because there's only a single six on there. And there are six possible things. So you remember this. Now, I want to make this definition a little bit finer. Okay? What this is, is like in a perfect world, in theory. So we call this probability, not just probability, but theoretical probability. We're all talking about this dime without actually getting some dice out and rolling them. You don't need to do any experiments. Do you remember what experiments were in probability? What's an experiment? Think back, you've got the definitions there. It's when you actually do something, right? It's when you get the die and you roll it. That's an experiment, okay? Now, you don't need to do an experiment to know that this is the probability. This is what it's supposed to be, okay? But today we're gonna push in that a little bit. What if we actually got the dice out and we started to roll it, okay? Now this idea here, as the heading suggests, is called experimental probability. Can you go back, please, to where you saw, or rather, where you wrote the actual definition of an experiment? Go back, it should be on the very first page of probability. What did you write down? What was your um, sentence that went along with it? Experiment. Yeah, nice and loud, Daniel. Sorry, say it again, nice and clearly. Carrying out a situation involving chance. Okay, fantastic. So we're actually gonna do something, and you guys are gonna be rolling a lot of dice today, okay? But it's still probability, so there's still going to be a really large fraction. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of the number of possible outcomes, what we're going to have is the number of experiments carried out. How many times did you actually roll the dice? Right? Did you roll it once, 10 times, 100 times? And on the top, what we want is number all times you actually got the favorable events, right? The number of times you got the favorable event or outcome. Okay? So, for example, if I were to take this die, right? Any of these die. I don't know if this is a fair die or not. By the way, do you know what it's called when a die is not fair? What do we call that? It starts with an L. They call it a loaded die. 
Okay. So the idea is, right, you've got this, the, um, the die and you can't see what's on the inside. So maybe what they've done is they've put like weights inside so that when you roll it, you know, one side is more likely to go on the bottom. So that means the up opposite side is the side most likely to come up. Okay. Now maybe what you want to do is find out, is this die loaded? Is it fair? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do an experiment. In fact, we're going to do lots and lots of experiments and find out. For instance, let's just consider. Suppose, draw a table for me. Suppose what I do is I count up the number of times I get a particular number, right? And then how many rolls do I get that number on? So we already know, uh, let's divide this up. We already know the possible numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. Suppose we roll this thing 60 times. Suppose we roll it 60 times. If this theoretical probability was perfectly true, what would you expect to get? How many times would you expect to get a 6 if you rolled 60 times? How many times? Yeah. Exactly 10, right? That's what you would expect. Let's just write down 10. Okay? And then you keep on rolling, you keep on rolling, and when you add up, just suppose you get like 29 of this, maybe you get like 5 of this one, 6 of this one, uh, 8 of this one, and then help, someone help me add up. 29 plus 5 is 30, 30. 34 plus 40, 48, 58, so that leaves 2. Okay? So just suppose this is what happened. Just suppose this is what happened. Right? Are you going to conclude this is a fair die? Yes. No. Okay, I don't want to gamble with you, <laughs> okay? This clearly doesn't look fair. These numbers, like this number is coming up way more frequently than anything else, right? So I would say the experimental probability, experimental probability of each of these depends on what kind of experiments you did, right? So for example, for the ones, right? If the favorable event was ones, that happened 29 times, and then how many experiments did I do? I did 60, right? So that's the experimental probability. Now it's not the same as the theoretical probability, but that's kind of the whole point. I want to find out whether this is going to be what I expect or not. Okay. Uh, this is going to be 5 out of 60. That's true, but I could simplify that a little bit, right? Can I write that as a better fraction? How else can I write it? 1 out of 12, very good. <laughs> 6 out of 60. 6 out of 60, what's that simplified to? 10. Very good. 8 out of 16. <laughs> Come on, help us out, guys. Wait, two, Look for a common factor. 2 out of 15. 2 out of 15. Oh, wow. 2 out of 60. One out of thirty. Oh, genius. Oh, <laughs> ten out of sixty. One out of six. One out of six. Okay, we got there. 